What is going on YouTube? It's Sacktown Pete back with another video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Sacktown, I hope you guys are having a great Monday. A lot to cover today. The Sacramento Kings played the Cleveland Cavaliers and they went on to beat the Cavaliers tonight. Final score 119 to 105. Let's get into it starting with the starting five. But wait a minute, we have a Warge bomb. Before I get started with the starting five and get into the numbers, it's been reported, Warge is uh, reporting that the Clippers are trading Mefondu. Campbell Gilly, sorry if I mispronounced that, and a future second and cash to the Kings for protective second round pick. Um, Kevin Alley is a 6'9 forward, was taken uh, 27th overall out of Florida State in 2019, and it, he is um, the nephew of the Kambi Mutumbo. So I don't know much of this uh, prospect, but I do know that the Kings traded for him, and uh, wow. We get a Kings win and a trade uh, the same night. So, looking forward to uh, seeing how this and uh, how he fits in with the roster and what Monty McNair, Sacramento Kings GM, uh, why he traded for him. So, I'm looking for more intel, more information on why this trade went down. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead and start off with the starting five Harrison Barnes. In 41 minutes, he had 9 points, 10 boards, 8 assists. Buddy Heald in 38 minutes, he had 19 points, 6 boards, 2 assists. De'Aaron Fox in 38 minutes, he had 30 points, 6 rebounds, 6 assists. Tyrese Halliburton in 36 minutes, he had 28 points, 1 rebound, 2 assists. Rashad Holmes in 35 minutes, he had 17 points, 16 boards, 3 assists, 2 blocks. And the bench, Corey Joseph in 26 minutes, he had 7 points, 2 boards, 3 assists. Hassan Whiteside in 12 minutes, he had 6 points, 7 boards, 2 assists. Nemanja Bielica, in nine minutes, he had three points, one rebound, zero assists. And Justin James, in three minutes, he had zero points. And the Cleveland Cavaliers starting five tonight. Colin Sexton, in 29 minutes, he had 15 points, seven assists, four rebounds. Okoro, in 28 minutes, he had six points, two boards. Darius Garland, in 28 minutes, he had 17 points, two assists. Jared Allen, in 27 minutes, he had 11 points, nine boards, one block. And Larry Nash Jr., in 25 minutes, he had four points, five boards, two assists. All right, so tonight's game was uh, definitely what stood out to me was the guard, the guards, uh, and that guard play of Halliburton, Fox, and Buddy Hill combined. I can't think of when's the last time uh, these three guards all together played great or had a good game. And I know we played the Cleveland Cavaliers tonight, but with that being said, it was great to see uh, all three of them play great at the same time. Uh, Buddy Heald was uh, definitely a good uh, lights out from downtown. Shot 50%. He was 5 of 10 from downtown. Um, he had 19 points. Uh, the shooting short looked good tonight from Buddy. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton got a new career high tonight. 28 points for Tyrese Halliburton. He looked like his old self. And it, this was probably his best game of the second half of the start of the season for Tyrese Halliburton. And De'Aaron Fox was just De'Aaron Fox. He was cooking. Took over this game. You know, widened the lead. And when we needed him the most, he just came through, man. And this game was, we already had a big enough of a lead towards the end of the fourth quarter. But when we needed to widen the gap or further uh, our double digit lead, De'Aaron Fox took over in the third quarter. And he pretty much put this game away. And this game was already pretty much over in the fourth quarter. Um, Rashad Holmes uh, was a beast tonight, all over the uh, paint and glass, just like how he was against the Boston Celtics from Friday. Um, you know, 17, 16 boards crashed in the glass and also had two blocks. And it was great to see Holmes just all around good effort from Mr. Rashad Holmes. Okay, so going back to the trade that I mentioned earlier, uh, the Sacramento Kings are looking for some wing depth. And I think that they possibly could found this potential uh, wing to fit uh, uh, fill a need that we desperately need coming off the bench. Um, I'm not sure what Monty McNair uh, sees in this prospect. But I do want to mention that, hey, it's Monty McNair's first uh, trade before the trade deadline. So he has definitely uh, made some noise uh, made, made some noise tonight. And that is by trading uh, for, um, if I'm going to mispronounce his name, I'm sorry, Mifondu Kambelajili. So hopefully I didn't mispronounce that. If I did, sorry. But with that being said, looking forward to it. Uh, maybe it's just a fresh start for him. He's coming from the Clippers. Obviously, the Clippers don't need him because they have a star-studded team, and they got a superstar playing ahead of them in uh, Kawhi Leonard. So I think that it would make sense to kind of 
ship them out and get what you can. And then we pretty much didn't give up much to get them either. So with that being said, uh, there was a report, an offer today that the Sacramento Kings had a trade offer on the table for the Detroit Pistons that included Marvin Bagley for the Pistons to, uh, to Mar sending in Marvin Bagley to the Pistons to, for, uh, Sadiq Bay, which I'm not a fan of at all. And let me tell you why, let me tell you guys why I'm not a fan of this all. Marvin Bagley, he's, I just think that you're giving up too early on him. Um, I understand he's owed, uh, come a, a combined uh, 25 million over two years the next two seasons. He's still under the rookie uh, contract, but his salary does kick in starting at $11 million next season. He's still only 22 years old. Um, I get the fact that you don't know what you're going to get in him as far as like health wise, if he can continues to get injury prone, or if he continues just to get hurt on the court and cannot stay healthy. I get why you want to get rid of him. But the only thing I can think of is it's like, why would you sell so low? I mean, Sadiq Bay, nothing against nothing, nothing against him. Kerr averages Marvin Bagley. He still outscored him and averaging stat wise, Marvin Bagley's stats are way better than Sadiq Bay's. Um, and can you just imagine if Marvin Bagley was healthy the last two seasons? Um, we saw what he's done this first half of the year and before he got hurt. But it's like I don't, I'm not, I'm not digging it. If you're gonna trade Marvin Bagley. You got to just at least uh, get some type of value in return. And I just think that Sadiq Bey does not cut that. I think we're selling low. I just think that if you're going to trade Marvin Bagley, don't trade him right away. Don't sell him for a bag of Cheetos. Um, you know, let him play with the Kings. We still have him two years under his contract. We let him play out with us, you know, build some repertoire. And then just if you feel like the deal is right, then you can trade him later. And I'm not a fan of that. I'm actually not, not a fan of trading Bagley. I just think that the potential is still there with him. But Monty McNair is wasting no time. And I get it. I get Monty McNair doesn't care that if he was a number, former number two overall pick because he's not the one who picked him. But at the end of the day, I think you're selling so low for a former number two overall pick who still has loads of amount of potential and can get it right. And another thing why I think this uh, they may report to move him by the deadline is because maybe personally Bagley in his camp, uh, meaning his family, has probably may, might have asked a privately for a trade. So uh, we can't see all the ins and outs obviously behind closed doors, but that could be another possibility why they want to trade Bagley because maybe they privately asked for a trade, which disappoints me because uh, I really want Bagley to work out here in Sacramento. I think that he's still despite what his family says or what they think about the Sacramento Kings organization. I still think Marvin Bagley is a hell of a talent, uh, minus the injuries. It just sucks that he got hurt. And I not all, I'm not on board for trading Marvin Bagley. I just think that it's too early to give up on him. So that's where I stand with that. It's also been reported that we're interested in John Collins, uh, the Atlanta Hawks uh, forward center. Uh, definitely a good uh, player. Uh, his career averages, he they're really nice, considering the fact that he's been in the league for a couple years now. And the question is, is that uh, what would be the cost to get him? Because I know he's seeking a big contract after the season. He will be a free agent after the season. And the Atlanta Hawks are financially tied down with uh, bringing up, uh, worth giving Boganovich his money and Danilo Gallinari. Then you have Trey Young that's going to be due for extension. So I think that they possibly don't want to pay him the big bucks. And I don't see the Sacramento Kings paying John Collins the big bucks, uh, considering the fact that you have Rashad Holmes that's pending free agency. That's good. It's a pending free agent, and he wants to resign with the Sacramento Kings. But at the same time, I can, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they do, if they, if they show interest, and if they do look into trading for uh, John Collins. The issue is that what will we have to give, uh, to the Atlanta Hawks for John Collins. So I'm eager to see where that goes. I also forgot to mention that Jabari Parker is in the trade rumors. Not a surprise there. He hasn't really played that much this season. It's just crazy because he was a talk of town, a talk of training camp, should I say, coming into the season. And now he's just sitting on the bench and not even getting minutes in Luke Walton's rotation. So we'll see where that goes with him. But hey, Sacramento Kings, 
uh, are definitely making some headlines tonight. They got the win tonight. Tyrese Halliburton with 28 points at a new career high. Uh, De'Aaron Fox with 30 takes over this game. Took over. He was in control of majority of this game. And that's why we pretty much let one the game because of those two got it done. And uh, Buddy Hill shot the ball really well tonight. So with that being said, guys, let me know what your guys' thoughts on tonight's game. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. Please hit the like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter. I'll link to my Twitter account in the description below. I'm always active. I'm always engaging with other Kings fans on Twitter. So if you have Twitter, if you don't follow me, give me a follow. Give me a follow. We'll interact, interact and we'll talk Kings basketball on Twitter as well. That's going to do it for me for tonight's video, guys. Um, next game is Wednesday, and then we got the trade deadline on Thursday. So it's going to be interesting 72 hours and see what happens. Uh, if we continue to make moves, we made a move tonight, uh, a move that I was not expecting. And I'm sure a move that nobody was expecting. So we will see what happens. Uh, Monty McNair making some headlines tonight. All right, guys. You guys take care. Have a good night. Uh, keep pushing forward, and God bless. I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace.